Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you some of the best tips on building a PC for the first time for beginners. Um, I recently built my first gaming PC and I learned a whole ton amount of information and I'm going to share my experience and hopefully that helps you guys out when it comes to building your PC for the first time. Tip number one is a magnetic screwdriver. Uh, at first when I did a lot of research and I looked up a lot of you know builds and so forth, a lot of people recommended a magnetic screwdriver. Um, I thought it probably wouldn't be, you know, you know, really necessary and, and you know, you can get away with uh, a regular screwdriver, but I definitely recommend getting a magnetic screwdriver because, you know, when you're going to be working with these components, there's going to be a lot, you know, there's going to be a lot of tight spaces and you're going to need to get through certain angles and so forth and it's going to be really frustrating holding your screw and your screwdriver at the same time, you know, going inside these little, um, you know angles and so forth so I think it'll definitely come in really you know come in handy and you know you'll definitely be thankful afterwards the second tip is to skim the manuals whenever you open up all your components they're all going to come with you know their own manuals and I t I'd make sure to take a little bit of time to skim through all the manuals because you know especially if you're a first time PC builder it's definitely going to come in handy I know it really helped me out um, I think definitely understanding your motherboard inside and out is definitely a plus. You know, it's going to save a lot of headache because whenever you, when it comes down to, you know, plug and play, you'll know where everything is supposed to go to. The third tip is to organize your screws. Whenever you open up all your components, uh, a lot of them are going to come with a bunch of screws, especially your case. It's going to come with all these various amount of uh, screws. So one thing I do is to create a section in your open surface and organize your screws in a certain area and know which screw represents what on the manual because that way whenever the manual says you know uh, screw in this specific screw into um, you know your motherboard or for your um, you know other components or so forth you'll know exactly which screw to reference to and I think it'll definitely help you guys out and save you some time. The fourth tip is to grounding yourself. There's a lot of various ways on to how to ground yourself. Um, you know, one is, you know, getting those bracelets, um, you know, and plug it into your, you know, a metal object on your case, for example. Another one is to, um, you know, plugging in your power cable inside the wall and just touching the top metal part. Um, or um, the next option is what I personally did is uh, I just touch my case from time to time, you know, especially the metal parts on the inside and outside. The fifth tip is definitely one of the most useful tips I can definitely provide, and that is knowing your cables. Uh, whenever you open up your power cable and dump everything out, there's going to be a massive amount of cables. And for a first time PC builder, uh, that can be very uh, intimidating and it can become frustrating, you know, while you're plugging uh, everything in and trying to figure out where everything goes. So I'm going to try to help you guys out just quickly by identifying which cables are for what. Um, first off, you have your, your VGA cables. Um, the VGA cables are designed for uh, your graphics card. Once you install your graphics card in, you plug in your VGA cable inside of your graphics card and plug in the other side to your uh, power cable. Most graphics cards are going to require uh, two of these VGA cables, so you're going to have you know, uh, two of these going into your graphics card and then two of these going into your power cable, you know, VGA1 and VGA2. So that's where this comes in handy. Next cable is your, um, your CPU cables. Basically, you're going to see a CPU option on your power cable. You're going to plug it into your power cable, and then this goes onto your motherboard. There's going to be a section, um, and if you just, you know, read your manual real quick or, you know, look up where the CPU uh, is on your motherboard, that's where this goes. So CPU to the power cable and CPU to the motherboard, and that's it. The next cable is your SATA cables. Basically, the SATA cables are good for your hard drives, DVD or Blu-ray player, and let's say your water cooling system kit has a power outlet, you know, where you need to power it on. Um, that's where the SATA cables come in handy. So basically, you're going to plug in the SATA cable inside your power cable, and then you're going to have a bunch of various, you know, outlets where you can use, for example, your DVD or Blu-ray player, your um, hard drives, and so forth. So that's where this comes in handy, and this will give it the power. And then let's say, if, for example, if you're installing a Blu-ray or DVD player, once your Blu-ray DVD player has power, you need to, you know, plug in uh, this other SATA cable that comes along with, you know, your motherboard, for example, where it'll, you know, help recognize that you have a, you know, DVD or Blu-ray player. So you plug this 
this end, uh, this one of these ends on the DVD or Blu-ray player, and then you plug the other end onto your motherboard. So the next cable was the motherboard power cable, and I don't have that on hand right now because uh, it was automatically connected to my power cable that I bought. Um, but basically, it's just big old long chunky cable, and you know, um, you plug it into your uh, power cable if it's not already connected, and then it'll go onto your motherboard. There'll be this big old section. And you'll recognize it, you know, and you plug it in and, you know, your motherboard cable and that's about basically it. And you do have one last cable um, that I can remember is the Molex cable, um, and, you know, the P-E-R-I-F -E or something. Um, basically, those Molex cables are designed for, like, you know, people that need them for, let's say, older builds. Um, but that's where it's actually SATA cables have kind of started to come up in technology and, you know, Molex cables are not used as much. Um, you know, as you can refer to the uh, SATA cables now. Now the sixth tip I'd suggest is to making sure your RAM is compatible with your motherboard. And one way you can do that is to go on your motherboard supports uh, website. And, you know, they should have a QVL uh, list or, you know, a list where it shows all the, um, you know, RAMs that's compatible with the motherboard. And it'll definitely outline, um, you know, all the speed and, you know, uh, which ones exactly are compatible. So I definitely check that out, you know, and making sure your RAM is compatible. The seventh tip is about fans as far as the push and pull. Um, one way to definitely, uh, you know, the best way to remember is whenever you're looking at the fan, um, the front, the part where it has the main logo of the fan, and then on the back it's kind of like, you know, a lot of more descriptive um, codes and so forth. Um, just remember that the front with the main logo sucks in air, you know, and then the other side like pushes it out. So, for example, I have my airflow designed in a way where the front is sucking in air and then the top and the back is exhausting air. So, my main logo is pointing outwards in the front like this for it to suck in air. So, I hope that it really helps out. Um, I know for um, beginners it can be kind of confusing sometimes. The next tip is about the motherboard placement and where to put it when you're wanting to install everything. And the case that it comes with itself is, should be more than enough. And, you know, a lot of people on YouTube and so forth all build it on top of their case. Uh, on their you know their main box one thing that I'd recommend is you know on as far as if you're building your first PC and you're doing it alone a um, couple of resources that I could refer to is one is to uh, do a, do some YouTube video um, researching you know look into some of the people that are actually building it and so forth and you know and see exactly how they're doing it watch multiple videos and you know I think that will be really helpful one resource that I one other resource that really helped me out is to I called the um, the companies of the, my components for example this is an Asus uh, motherboard um, what I did is actually I would call their components uh, support you know uh, customer service and I'd ask them any questions I have as far as the motherboard and so forth and you know, understanding your motherboard inside and out is definitely very, very helpful um, when you're building your PC. But that is one uh, resource too. You know, if you bought an EV EVGA graphics card, for example, calling them and you know getting more information on certain things. So that is one resource that I definitely you know um, think it's very, very helpful. The last tip that I have is a very useful tip, and that is patience. I know there's so much excitement building your first PC. I was so excited. You know, I would be uh, so excited to wake up in the morning and you know, I would go to bed really late and trying to figure out you know how to build it um, But I would definitely say you know be patient especially if you're a first-time uh, PC builder and you're doing it all alone uh, Be very patient because you know once you achieve it and you you know install everything It'll feel so great and you know such a great achievement. Thank you guys so much for watching my video I really hope it helps you building your first PC and you know these tips really come in handy if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below in the comment section and I'll be sure to help you guys out as much as I can. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm really excited to keep making videos like this to helping you guys out. As an upcoming YouTuber, it really helps me gaining some momentum. So thank you so much for everything guys and until then, I'll see you guys soon. Take care.